I'm Dagny. In this video, I'm going to compare Korean movies with South African movies, in particular the ones that are available on Netflix, as an example of what types of things I would like to see more of content-wise in terms of African movies that are now being streamed on these major uh, platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Apple TV, etc. So the Korean movies are Crash Landing on You and Misty. Both of them, I saw them on Netflix. The other, Queen Sono and Blood and Water. Uh, both, I also saw on Netflix. Across the board, all four of these series, because all of them are series, not just one movie. All four of them I thought were awesome. So to start, let's talk about characters. Crash Landing on You and Misty, Korean series, each episode is an hour long which is kind of like a mini movie in itself. So maybe that's why they have more space to give you more character development. There's a lot more of through the dialogue, through how the character is, is reacting to things, through what types of challenges the character has to overcome. You really end up at the end of the series, you are rooting for this character, like you are invested in the character due to how the, it developed throughout the story. In Crash Landing on You, it's a story of two people coming from North Korea and South Korea. And, you know, it's an unexpected meeting that they have. And the story kind of continues in terms of, one, the girl's from South Korea. She was kind of stranded in North Korea. She tries to get back to South Korea. She kind of falls in love while doing that. And then even though she gets back to South Korea, there's action because... Someone's trying to kill her and her love has to come and kind of like rescue her. Due to their, their love story, both characters kind of evolve in terms of what they're used to and what they want out of life and what, they, what they're choosing to sacrifice for each other. In Misty, uh, the main character is a news reporter who gets a little entangled because one, her husband is an attorney and her ex-boyfriend is this superstar golf player. And uh, this ex-boyfriend comes up because now they have to do a documentary about him. And what ends up happening is, well, she's the reporter for it. And he, of course, is kind of, even though he, he is also married, but he's also kind of teasing her because he says he knows she still loves him. And then he is found dead. And now we're trying to figure out how did he die? Someone must have murdered him. And I won't tell you how that ends either. But throughout the series, you get the development of the character in terms of how she ended up with these two different men and what she has had to go through for herself through her career and as a person and how these two men in her life are kind of the, kind of like the antithesis to her character development, or that's what pushes her to continue to progress to be herself. Comparing that to the characters we have in Queen Sono and Blood and Water. Queen Sono, she is a detective, secret agent, boss, badass type person. The case that she's working on has ties to her mother and social justice and the apartheid movement and her ex-boyfriend. Now you get all of that and you get the action and everything, but you don't feel her as a character. She has all the trimmings correct. Like she's packaged perfectly, just like these other two shows that I just mentioned. But there's not enough, there's not enough meaningful dialogue to allow her character to develop in front of the viewer. A lot of the dialogue are one-liners because we're about to fight and one-liners because we're about to make love, and another one-liner because now we've discovered something we didn't know. There's not enough meaningful one-on-one -on -one or one-on-one -on -one in her head or one-on-one -on -one with other characters to get the sense that, oh wow, this character really is actually going, progressing through something. And so we're really rooting for her at the end, right? That is That was something I really wanted to see more of because I already thought from the first episode, I was like, yes, oh my gosh, we finally, I've always wanted to see such a, such a show or such a film. Reminds me of Carmen Sandiego almost, you know, like that awesome, yes, and she's black woman. Yes, great story and everything, but I wanted more from the character. I wanted to learn more from the character. I wanted to see the character develop more. 
and go through more outside of fighting scenes and having an attitude towards certain people. Then with Blood and Water, the main girl who's trying to find out who her sister is and switching schools and all of that to find it is like the main character. I get the deal of she's a teenager, her parents are having difficulties, and there's this constant shadow or cloud over their family because their sister, her sister was kidnapped and they're holding out, insisting that she could not be dead and they're hoping they'll find her. The characters felt like they were on the surface. There was still space to have more dialogue and more dialogue between the characters and more dialogue in her head about what she's going through and what she's learning about herself, you know? Um, that is something that these other two Korean movies had a lot of, of first, you always are hearing the character in their head. They're talking to themselves, right? So they have those moments of, wow, having like epiphanies or checking themselves or questioning themselves, right? In Blood and Water, you see her stumbling, right? Through trying to figure out who her sister is. It would have been nice to hear from her how while she's progressing, finding her sister, what she's learning about herself. Why is finding her sister so important to her and her family, right? What does she even think about her family during this time? Because some things kind of just like were left on the wayside. Like because she's doing that, we don't even hear about the parents until, oh, there's another court case. Oh, okay, yeah, you have parents. You know, like it was certain things that it felt like the character was a first draft and we need to have like two or three other drafts to get to let her have more to her. Now, in terms of showcasing culture, in these two Korean movies, which I've seen this year alone, I have actually watched quite a few Korean movies. I, It's like, I don't know, a newfound love, I guess. Um, really just trying to explore other cultures, really. And what stood out to me is how they are able to weave in th with the story just it's Korean without, as if it's for themselves, as opposed to it being appealing to someone who's not from there. All right. Now I personally, I've never been to Korea, so I can't, I really can't claim if what they are showcasing in the movie is really what South Korea is like, or is really what the people are like. Since we know as Hollywood, you can't claim a movie is exactly the way America is. Or the way Nollywood doesn't show exactly the way Nigeria is, you know? So uh, I I get it that it is it is for the story and it is for the film and that sort of thing. But you get the, the way they dress. They're always eating. They always use like the same two or three songs throughout the series. So you are basically singing the entire song at the end of the series, even though you don't speak Korean. At least that's what I was doing, and I don't speak Korean. The way in which they interact, the way they interact with elders, the way they interact with their parents, the way the way they court each other, if it is a love story, uh, the way police officers or law enforcement or the legislation system works because the story itself has that incorporated in it. You get a whole lot that's kind of just, it's just the environment, but you get a sense that they really took their time to fill the environment with all of the accessories that it needs to make it feel real. In these other two films, Queen Sono and Blood and Water, there was more room to do that since both of them are South African. So you get the huge wide shot of the city at night or the wide shot of nature. Did we even see them eat? Like, do you know what South Africans who are part of their family would normally eat for dinner? No, you don't. For Blood and Water, it kind of made me feel that the way the wardrobe was set up and the way the settings or the scenes were set up, it made me feel like I'm watching Degrassi based in Africa. Nothing wrong with Degrassi. To be honest, when I was on TV, I wasn't, I will admit, I wasn't one of them who, I wasn't one of the people who was watching, watching it. I think one of my sisters enjoyed it. So I would always get like, pass by and see clips and stuff. But that's what it made me feel like, okay, yeah, y'all in high school doing high school things, except some of you, your family lives in a mansion and others of you don't. And yeah, that's it. That's kind of, that's kind of it. Which then ends up looking like this could be anywhere though. Like how does this make it be of the place? 
Queen Sono, at least, because the dialogue is talking about apartheid or talking about government or talking about history, it you're constantly reminded of like, okay, where we're at, as well as the accents and things like that. But did they ever eat anything? Did they ever interact with their elders in a certain way that is culturally appropriate for them? You know, like, again, like, you have the scenes and stuff, but there's room to add on so many other nuances to fill up the the environment your character is experience is having an experience in. Next, who is your audience? In these two Korean movies, I really get the sense that nothing was done to appeal to a foreign gaze. Queen Sono and Blood and Water, for these two films, even though it's not like they're trying to recreate a foreign story in South Africa, it still came across as we either don't want to make it too heavy because we're trying to pine for an audience outside or don't want to put too much in it again because you're going to be someone else outside of your culture is watching. For African film has come such a long way. Like in terms of quality and cinematography and soundtrack and all of that, like it's, it is top notch, like it's awesome. And I'm so glad that more accessibility is happening now for independent filmmakers, as well as mainstream, as well as mainstream and being able to be accessible for a wider audience. I think that's awesome. In that though, there is still room when it comes to the content of the films. It's great for it to look amazing, but the the storyline itself can do better. Like, cause there's so much more that can be done in it. A good example of an African film that I thought really got close to that or really actually did that was Lionheart, which also was available on Netflix. Not sure if it's still there now, which I saw when it came out, which I believe was last year. That was good in terms of the content of it, you really felt like you are seeing the culture and the character developing and things like that. So it's not that it's impossible to do, I just feel, but that was just a movie, it wasn't a series. So I think when it comes to series, there's there's so much more you need to fill in because you need to be on point for every single episode. And with these two, I feel like I'm hoping, because I think both of them have been have gotten the green light for their second season, I hope they put more in it, right? You don't have to change up the whole story, but there's so much room to put, to, to give the characters more depth and to fill up the environment the character is in. If you'd like to read up more about this, make sure to go to my website, diviesandnovia.com uh, for the blog post for this video. Also, if you have not already, remember to subscribe to my channel, share with me and comment below one, have you seen any of the series that I was talking about? What did you think of them? Have you ever thought about comparing them? And what would you like to, what did you love about it? What would you like to see more of? Share with me below and let's continue the conversation. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe. I'll see you next time.